Welcome to a video on matrix multiplication, and the goal of this video is to multiply two matrices when possible. Let's go and take a look at the steps for multiplying two matrices. Number one, the product of an M by N matrix and an N by K matrix is an M by K matrix. Notice the number of columns in the first matrix must be the same as the number of rows in the second matrix. This is not true. The two matrices cannot be multiplied. So let's take a closer look at this idea. If we multiply an M by N matrix by an N by K matrix, the number of columns in the first matrix and the number of rows in the second matrix must be equal. If they're not, we cannot perform the multiplication. And secondly, the dimensions of the product will be M by K. Number two, to determine each element in the product, we will multiply each element in the ith row of the first matrix by the corresponding element in the jth column of the second matrix. Then we'll sum these products, and that will be the element A sub I J. And lastly, matrix multiplication is not commutative, so it's very important that we pay attention to the order of the multiplication. Let's go ahead and take a look at an example. If we want to find the product of matrix A and matrix B, let's first determine if it's even possible. Let's go ahead and write out matrix A times matrix B. The dimensions of matrix A is a two by two, and the dimension of matrix B is a two by one. So since the number of columns in matrix A matches the number of rows in matrix B, we can perform the multiplication and the product will be a two by one matrix. Now let's go ahead and determine the elements in this product. This element here is in row one, column one. So to determine the element in row one, column one, we're gonna multiply row one in the first matrix by column one in the second matrix. So we'll multiply the first element times the first element and then multiply the second element times the second element. So four times six would be 24, plus seven times negative five would be negative 35. So the element in row one, column one is equal to this sum, which is negative 11. In order to determine this element, this is in row two, column one, so we'll multiply row two in the first matrix times column one of the second matrix. So we'll have two times six, that's 12, plus negative one times negative five, that's positive five. So the element in row two, column one is equal to 17. And there's the product of those two matrices. Let's go and take a look at number two. Number two, we have matrix B times matrix A. So we're changing the order of the multiplication. So we would first have matrix B and then matrix A. We always have to check to see if it's even possible. This is a two by one matrix and this is a two by two matrix. Well, the number of columns in the first matrix does not match the number of rows in the second matrix. Therefore, we cannot find this product and we can say that this product is undefined. Number three, we have matrix C times matrix D. Let's go ahead and write it out. So matrix C is a two by three matrix and matrix D is a three by two matrix. These two numbers are equal to each other, which means we can perform the multiplication and the product will be a two by two matrix. So if this is a two by two matrix, we have four elements that we have to determine. We can start anywhere, but let's go ahead and start with this element here, which is in row one, column one. So we're gonna multiply row one in the first matrix times column one in the second matrix. And the way we do that is we'll find the product of the first times the first, the second times the second, and the third times the third, and then we'll find those sum. So we'll have one times negative eight, it's negative eight, plus 
2 times negative 5, that's negative 10, plus negative 4 times negative 2, that's positive 8. So this element will be equal to negative 10. Let's go ahead and find this element next. This would be in row 2, column 1. So now we multiply row 2 by column 1. So we'll have 7 times negative 8, negative 56, plus 0 times negative 5, that's 0, plus 3 times negative 2, which would give us negative 6. Looks like we have negative 62. So you can see, as long as you know the location of the element you're trying to determine in the product, it is a fairly straightforward process. Let's go ahead and find these remaining two elements. I'm going to go ahead and clear these highlights. This element here is in row 1, column 2. So we multiply row 1 times column 2. Didn't leave a lot of room here. Let's go ahead and see if we can fit it in here. This is a sub 1, 2, row 1, column 2. So we have 1 times 2, that's 2, plus 2 times 1, that's 2, plus negative 4 times 4, that's negative 16. And this sum is equal to negative 12. The last element here is in row 2, column 2. So now we'll multiply this row by column 2. So we'll have 7 times 2, that's 14, plus 0 times 1, that's 0, plus 3 times 4, that's 12. And that equals 26. And there's our product. I think we have time for one more example. Let's go ahead and find matrix D times matrix C. So we'll start by rewriting this in the correct order. Let's go ahead and check to make sure that it's possible. This is a 3 by 2, and this is a 2 by 3. So these two numbers tell us that it is possible because they're equal, and the product will be a 3 by 3 matrix. Let's go ahead and write that down so we can keep track of all the different elements. Again, it doesn't matter in which order we determine these elements. Let's go ahead and try to find this first row this time. So to determine this element in row 1, column 1, we'll multiply row 1 in the first matrix times column 1 in the second matrix. So we'll have negative 8 times 1 plus 2 times 7 is 14. So we have positive 6. And this element here is in row 1, column 2. So now we'll multiply this row by this column. So we'll have negative 8 times 2, that's negative 16, plus 2 times 0, that's 0. So we have negative 16. This element is in row 1, column 3. So now we'll multiply this row by this column. So we have negative 8 times negative 4, that's positive 32, plus 2 times 3, that's 6. So it looks like we have 38. Let's go ahead and determine row 2 now. This is in row 2, column 1. So we'll multiply row 2 in the first matrix times column 1 of the second. So I have negative 5 times 1, that's negative 5, plus 1 times 7, that's 7, that equals positive 2. Now we'll go to row 2, column 2 in this location here. So now we'll multiply row 2 by column 2. Negative 5 times 2, that's negative 10, plus 1 times 0. So we have negative 10. And then row 2, column 3 here. Here's column 3. So we have negative 5 times negative 4, that's 20, plus 1 times 3, that's 3. So we have 23. And finally, the last row. That'll do it for this video. Thank you for watching.